constitutional morality versus societal morality i will start my lecture like this definitely if i am teaching you judiciary if i am teaching you parliament if i am teaching you fundamental rights i have plethora of stories so through judicial judgments through the storytelling you have cracked the last part explain the doctrine of constitutional morality with the help of relevant judicial decisions so introduction body conclusion anybody who is going through my lecture anybody who goes through my foundational lecture all its authority from constitution and constitution is the only source that limits the government also so you just saw my style of teaching and it will have a flair of storytelling without storytelling without anecdotes without answer writing without ensuring that your concepts are clear i will not proceed forward hello students i am saket jha and i'll be teaching indian polity this year as a part of foundation lectures at civils daily ias i am a journalist i have been to harvard business school i mentor interview aspirants at civils daily so in this video we'll be talking about polity as a subject the challenges associated with polity as a subject what is my style of teaching and how to really go about this subject so polity remains as a very exciting subject because lot of aspirants start their journey with indian polity also because they read newspapers a lot newspapers are usually covered with political news so polity automatically excites a lot of aspirants and it's an interesting subject no doubt about it but the biggest challenge is that there are too many sources available like too many sources we have ncrts we have lakshmi kant i see students reading dd basu also pm bakshi also so students really don't know where to draw a line and since it is so interesting uh, it tends to eat up a lot of time so biggest challenge is to restrict your resources to uh, to one book only in this case it is lakshmi kant so restricting your sources to lakshmi kant and then relying on class notes should be an ideal strategy to cover indian polity so this remains as a biggest challenge then of course over dependence on lakshmi kant also happens because lakshmi kant uh, book itself is in a note form and it's it's most recommended book and all of us have been using this although direct questions cannot be found now in polity because it has become more concept oriented but it is still very much relevant but lakshmi kant is not sufficient for mains you can definitely clear prelims by understanding concepts by applying concepts from lakshmi kant but for mains you need solid value addition because mains specifically gs2 uh you will see a lot of questions coming from current affairs and there lakshmi kant really does not help so when you join classes when you attend classes the value addition that we do in foundation classes that i'll be doing particularly in indian polity will help you to an extent solve a lot of questions from mains also but the most and the biggest challenge i would say is segregating polity from politics because again there is so much of political news and media is constantly covering each uh, news uh, be it uh, elections be it anything that is happening in parliament or state legislature so there is so much politics around but segregating polity out of it i mean kejriwal arrest or caa there is so much political angle and media will show you a lot of political angle which is not relevant for your exam so my job as a teacher is to segregate polity part out of politics for you so that you know this does not become a bone of contention uh, in your upsc preparation uh concepts because gone are those days uh when you used to cram and clear at least prelims from polity part but uh, cramming days are gone and it's all concepts now you have to understand you have to realize what a governor can do and what a president can do and what happens in if a constitutional machinery break downs so they are not giving you direct questions anymore you have to apply and that is why classes becomes very important because here i'll help you understand the concepts of the core topics so of course you cannot cram any more from lakshmi kant and clear prelims and means definitely not so you will be requiring some kind of guidance 
where I help you clear your concepts and then you are able to solve it, solve it for both prelims and mains. Answer writing, of course. So again, since polity and politics is uh, correlated, uh, we tend to start our answer writing also from polity part. And of course, big, as beginners, we, we write long paragraphs and a lot of us uh, are out of college. So we will be using the same uh, method of writing answers. But when you come to the classes, I'll tell you later, uh, answer writing is a part of, uh, will be the part of curriculum definitely. And I'll be helping you to uh, write better answers and more structured and nuanced answers for your mains also in live class only. Now, again, what is my style of teaching? So I definitely believe in this, uh, this thing that every theory will have a story. Uh, because I come from a journalism background also, uh, I believe in storytelling. And I, I believe in making the subject very, very interesting for you all. Because uh, if, you, if you look at my previous videos also of Kejriwal Arrest or Matua Community of CA, uh, I, would, I would really like you to, uh, I would really like, uh, I, I, I will start my class uh, from such kind of stories. Uh, be it, so if I'm teaching you uh, center state relations, and if I'm teaching you about finance commission, I will be, uh, I will be talking about, you know, uh, West Bengal. So these stories will help you understand the concepts more. It will help you to retain those concepts more. So it is just not about cramming whatever is written in the book. A good storytelling can really, really improve your preparation. Storytelling has to be related for that subject, definitely but it will help you enhance so much of your preparation. And I believe that every theory will have some story. So if I'm teaching you judiciary, if I'm teaching you parliament, if I'm teaching you fundamental rights, I have plethora of stories. And these stories are real time stories. Uh, be, uh, what is what happened in uh, say Bihar or what happened uh, during that protest, why such an issue came up, why court had to decide in a certain way. It's very interesting. Trust me, I'll make this subject very, very easy for you to understand. Uh, I know uh, how exciting politics and polity can become. So uh, I'll help you prepare that. PYQ base, definitely. I'll show you later that how I'll be able to help you uh, solve so many questions uh, in class only on the basis of uh, the concepts I teach you. But PYQs are essentially very, very important because uh, again, some topics are more important than some topics. So again, we, we read entire book, we cover entire syllabus, but special emphasis remains on certain themes. So if there are fundamental rights, certain fundamental rights are more important, definitely. And how do we discover that? We discover that on the basis of previous year questions. So it will be PYQ based. It will have a lot of storytelling and you will really enjoy. And it is, it is about understanding the core concepts. So if you're not able to understand a core concept, if you're not able to apply that in your exam, you're not able to clear. Because as I say that this exam no more requires a lot of cramming and gone are those days when you will keep a book and you will remember everything and you will just pen it down in the exam. It is not going to happen. It has become application based. Main specifically has gotten so application so much application based and so much dynamism is there in means that without current affairs without value addition without right application of concepts without understanding a demand of the question will not be able to solve the paper and for that conceptual clarity this foundation class my foundation class will help you a lot uh okay so if we look at this question i'll give you an example if i have to teach you something like this in class this is, uh, this is a previous year question. Uh, constitutional morality is rooted in the constitution itself and is founded on its essential facets. Explain the doctrine of constitutional morality with the help of relevant judicial decisions. So if I am teaching you the initial topics that is constitution, constitutionalism, constitutional morality, I am sure that you will be able to solve this question at least you will get a knack how to solve this question. So in this question also, if you're a beginner also, don't worry, constitutional morality is uh, on a bit 
higher level it's uh, it this question cannot be comprehended by someone who is starting the preparation but i will make sure that if i am teaching you this subject in class uh, you will get a knack how to approach this question at least so if i'm talking about constitutional morality i will take you to 2018 when uh, people from lgbtqia+ community were protesting uh, on streets for their rights because section 377 said that any unnatural sex is a crime and they were fighting for their rights came supreme court to the rescue in navte singh johar case and said that you cannot you cannot overlook constitutional morality just because majority of us or majority of people are of this opinion that uh, this is not right or this is not acceptable we are a conservative country after all no matter what no matter what the societal morality says no matter what the public morality says we cannot overlook the principle of constitutional morality when it comes to delivering justice and hence navte singh johar case you know it's a landmark judgment year down the line uh, sabri mala case indian young lawyers versus state of kerala i mean people were saying that such reforms should come from community uh, we are interfering in their faith and who is anybody to decide what we do with our community what we do with our faith true but again supreme court said that article 25 25 26 the word morality there is not public morality it is constitutional morality so the prism has to be constitutional morality so constitutional morality what is societal morality i will start my lecture like this definitely so if i am teaching you indian polity and if i have to teach you constitutional morality i'll take you to the recent judgment where supreme court has scrapped electoral bonds and i will tell you and i will start the discourse societal morality versus public morality and trust me all of you all of you will create an answer all of you will tell me how to approach this question so constitutional morality has so many so many cases like this puttu swami case adhar judgment uh, in city uh, of delhi versus union of a uh, union government where uh, where actually court said that constitutional morality is like basic structure doctrine 2.0 now our conversation will go to basic structure which will of course come in the later stage of indian polity constitution constitutionalism constitutional morality is in the initial stages but the interlinkage the beauty of this subject is that you can interlink it so well with other topics and you have so many stories and you'll not you'll not be bored you'll not be bored uh, when i teach you constitutionalism when i teach you constitutional morality i guarantee you that so this is this is how you have to approach this answer so through judicial judgments through the storytelling you have cracked the last part explain the doctrine of constitutional morality with the help of relevant judicial decisions i gave you five of them just now these are this is one part of your answer then what is constitutional morality of course uh, you will you will crack that for me the students who are listening to me they you will tell me what is constitutional morality is it the basic could be the adherence to the constitutional value in a democracy is constitutional morality that's definitely the basic answer but what else what else what is the x factor how will you gain more marks in mains you will tell me you will tell me through discourse through healthy discourse through the engaging conversation that we will do in class you will create that introduction for me the basic introduction is what i told you right now but you will give me a better introduction through discourse this is how i am going to teach you uh is rooted in the constitution itself as and is founded on its essential facets of course it is not directly mentioned in the constitution but through preamble through fundamental rights through fundamental duties independence of judiciary separation of powers all of them implies towards constitutional morality so you see how interesting this can get so introduction body conclusion anybody who is going through my lecture anybody who goes through my foundational lecture will be easily able to deduce this part introduction body conclusion very very easily 
This is important. This becomes important. So, of course, now this answer will not fetch you very good marks in means because this is a very basic answer. But at least a beginner who's attending the classes is able to solve a higher ended means question. What better than that? And of course, then I'll give you more uh, value addition in class. I'll tell you where to use diagrams, how to say words and how to be more aesthetic in your answers. What best practice you can write in conclusion. You know, these things that we have proven strategies for, we know that these things work. I'll be telling you this in class. So this is how exciting, this is how engaging my teaching, my style of teaching is. And I'm sure you will be going to enjoy if you come and sit and attend my foundation lecture. So uh, if I teach you constitutional morality, I teach you constitution. I teach you constitutionalism. And then I also teach you constitutional morality. And the concepts will be so right, so clear, so articulate that you will be able to solve not only means, but prelims question also. So... Uh, Constitutional government is which places effective restriction on individual liberty in the interest of state authority, places effective restriction on the authority of state in the interest of individual liberty. Second, it was quite an easy question, but when I teach you constitution, I will teach you that constitution and what constitutionalism is and how it, it limits the government, definitely. So government gains all its authority from constitution and constitution is the only source that limits the government also or the state also. So I'll be able to explain you the important concepts of liberty, state, restrictions, constitutional government. So such things will come through stories when I teach you constitution, constitutionalism, constitutional morality. And you will be able to solve such prelims and means questions very easily. So again, next question. Constitutional government means a representative government of a nation with a federal structure, a government whose head enjoys nominal power, a government whose head enjoy real power, a government limited by the terms of constitution. See, again, I have to start like this. I cannot start constitutional government without telling you this, that a government that is limited by constitution is constitutional government. Cannot. Through storytelling, I will have a story to tell. I will have some anecdote to share. This is the beauty. This is how you, this is how I am going to teach. And this is, I'm, I'm, I'm sure on the basis of this style, on the basis of answer writing, uh, you will be able to solve, of course, prelims 100% means to a lot of extent because means requires uh, two, three stages more. That of course, I will help you through my value addition also. But prelims 100% you will be able to solve it is conceptual. Questions these days from Indian polity are conceptual. And if I teach you what is constitutionalism, if I teach you what is constitutional morality, you will be able to tackle any, any question of PYQs. And I will pick, I'll focus more on those themes also that are, that has a higher possibility of getting repeated. Definitely. That is more important. So we have a, we have a huge team. We know, we know that uh, we have we have been mentoring over the years. We understand that what part is more important and what part is not. So trust our wisdom. We'll be able to help you a lot. So you just saw my style of teaching and it will have a flair of storytelling. Without storytelling, without anecdotes, without answer writing, without ensuring that your concepts are cleared, I will not proceed forward. This I can guarantee you. Uh, vision and mission. Remains the same. Our philosophy has been mentorship. We'll not deny this. Uh, we take a lot of inspiration, a lot of inspiration from mentorship. One-to-one -one mentorship remains our strength. And we have seen this working. AIR2, Animesh Pradhan. I was there in that life. All of you saw me. He came here first. No matter whatever people say. He came here first because he had a lot of gratitude towards his mentor. Ranadhir sir hand-holded him till the end. And he had to come here first to show the gratitude and he did that. So mentorship, one-to-one -one mentorship is something that we take inspiration from. 
This is Sivil Zaley's philosophy, mentorship, one-to-one, -one, personalized. And this is what we inculcate in class also. So it will not be a traditional classroom teaching where I come and teach concepts and you do the, you do the remaining things on your own. No, that's not how it is. If any one of you is not able to understand my responsibility, even if uh, I have to go beyond my classes offline, I'll ensure that your doubts are solved. My teaching to an extent has to be personalized for a lot of them. So this is, this is where we take inspiration from. This is who we are. We are mentors first, teachers later. And mentorship, be it prelims, be it means, be it interview, remains our core strength. And this is what we apply to classroom programs also, like foundation, like Samachar Mantra, we do that. I can guarantee of the quality and I can guarantee of the efficiency. I can vouch. I can vouch that my quality will be better from most of my competitors because I know, I, I value my research. I know where I am bringing the anecdotes from. I, I, I understand. I understand that a lot of concerns are there on quality of lectures, but it will not be like a normal lecture. I will have something to share. I will have an X factor to give it to you so that you can write in your answers. So do not worry about that at all. Pace is something I'll of course ensure because I understand some of you will be veterans, some of you will be beginners and I have to take everyone along. This sometimes gets challenging, but as I said, I take inspiration from one-to-one -one mentorship. I'm a mentor first, so I know how to take beginners also along. So I know how to put extra efforts to them, for them. And I'll be doing that if wherever it is needed. So this course features, of course, as I said, answer writing remains and we will be doing that. We cannot ignore this part. So whenever we finish a class and the next day, whatever we discussed, we'll be starting the class by writing answers first. Seven minutes, seven and a half minutes, intro body conclusion. No matter who you are, veteran or a beginner, you write daily answers. So over a course, over the course of lectures, I'll ensure that every lecture you're writing one to two answers on a daily basis. And this will not only teach you the art of answer writing, but it will also add a lot of value to your answers. So that means part, the difficult part is also something that you will be learning in the classroom only to your peers also, because there everybody is writing an answer. So you, you know that you can be, we can compare a good answer, you know? So this is where, uh, this is one of the distinctive feature that I would like to add in this program is answer writing in every class. It's very, very important. PYQs as a, as a given example for constitutional morality, constitution, constitutionalism. Uh, I know, I know what are most important topics and what concept I have to make sure that you know, so that you're able to solve previous year questions, both prelims and mains will be my focus. Current affairs value addition polity cannot happen without current affairs. Cannot happen. GS2 entirely, most of it, six, 70 to 80 percent in means is current affairs. Will be coming from your newspapers. Polity out of politics. You have to have current affairs in Indian polity. Without that, you cannot operate. So Lakshmi Kant is sufficient to for concepts, definitely. For, for prelims, but for means value addition, for deeper conceptual clarity, apart from Lakshmi Kant, the class notes that I'll give you live in class will be more than sufficient for your prelims and means. This is what I can guarantee you. So apart from Lakshmi Kant, you do not need to refer any other source book if you attend my foundation lectures, my class notes and Lakshmi Kant will cover entire prelims for you and 60-70% means for you, definitely.